The Sunday Times rich list for 2021 has landed with 171 billionaires in the list. That's an increase of 24 from last year. The combined value of just the billionaires alone is more than 500 billion pounds. If you're watching my videos for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain, and on this channel I share with you my 15 years of property investing experience to ultimately help you get further faster in your property investing journey. You may be wondering right now, what's a property guy's fascination with the Sunday Times Rich List? Well, the Sunday Times Rich List right now is in the 33rd publication. When the first one was released and I bought my first copy of the Sunday Times Rich List, I was not even in my 20s at that time. I was one of those kids at school who used to sell computer games, make a few extra quid. I was always driven about doing more, wanting more, wanting to achieve more. There was no internet at that time, and this was a publication I really used to look forward to every single year. And I was just so fascinated about how people live, what they do, how they made their money. But it was many, many years later until the penny dropped for me, and I'd realized that so many of the people on that list either made their money in property or kept money in property. Many people have had a really difficult 12 months. Businesses have been struggling, people have been losing loved ones to COVID. There's been a mass amount of uncertainty around jobs, whether people have even got jobs to go back to. Just really just trying to survive has been a challenge. But during that same time, the UK has created 24 new billionaires. So what's going on in the marketplace? That's more billionaires than ever at any time before within a 12 month period. This reminds me of a great quote that more millionaires are created during a recession than at any other time. And it just seems like it's so true. In this case, we're talking about billionaires. Although we might not be in a recession right now, these recessionary times means that there's opportunities that exist, but it's really about understanding where those opportunities are. So where have these billionaires been making their money? An example of a unicorn business that's done really well is Alec Chesterman's kazoo business. Previously, a bagel salesman that had great wins with a Love Film and also Zoopla as well, made some money from that. And now his current business venture, Kazoo, which has been running for less than six months, has had a valuation of more than a billion dollars. He's, this is a website to sell secondhand cars, and right now it's not even sold 20,000 cars just yet, but has a valuation of a billion dollars and not even made a single pound of profit. This just goes to show that there's plenty of people looking to invest in potential opportunities when times like this, when the world is changing, new opportunities come about, new businesses come about. If you look back to uh, things like Netflix uh, and Uber, these businesses were evolved during the last recession. When the world starts to change, new opportunities get created and exist. And there's a huge amount of money available for people wanting to invest in these type of businesses. It's really about coming up with those smart ideas. There have also been a number of casualties over the last year as well. One of the big ones being Sir Philip Green's empire of the Arcadia Group. When that collapsed, all the retail stores have gone down as well. That's caused a bit of a dent in his net wealth. Him and his wife are reported to be worth £910 million even after the damage of the Arcadia Group. In fact, their wealth has only dropped by about £30 million, show which is only a small part of their overall wealth. It's probably because they pulled out so much money during the days of British home stores to make sure that they're still worth a handsome amount of money. Others have rushed in to take advantage of the situation, particularly those in the online space, such as your ASOS and your Boohoo, which have been clearing up the brands of the Arcadia Group to make sure they can take advantage of those in the online space. This just goes to show that how big online is becoming, with the likes of Amazon being one of the biggest businesses in the world and the founder Jeff Bezos being one of the wealthiest people in the world, it just shows the shift that's happening towards online retail. So when we look at Boohoo, for example, and we look at the founders, Mahmoud Kamani, and his family over the last year have increased their wealth by a staggering million pounds a day. This shows us how quickly online businesses are growing and the importance that they have in the marketplace today. This has had a huge impact on the retail property sector, as you'd imagine. That means so many of these retail businesses have been struggling and not been able to pay their rent. The values have been knocked, particularly for some of those big property landlords. A property investor we all know, but not necessarily know him for property, is Lord Sugar from the infamous TV show The Apprentice. His net worth is 1.2 billion, which is slightly down from last year, having taken a 10 million pound hit in terms of down valuations on his London property portfolio. 
Hey, if you enjoyed this content, then make sure you whack that like button and subscribe to the channel and enable the notification bell. This way, not only will you get notified when we're releasing videos just like this, but it will also help me out massively in order to be able to reach more people just like you to be able to get this content out to them. One of the reasons that I've been collecting, studying, researching the Sunday Times Rich List now for more than 30 years was the inspiration I'd get from learning about the richest people that live amongst us. But in my early 20s, or when I wasn't even 20, when I bought that first edition and I started learning about some of the richest people amongst us, I really got inspired by some of the young people that make it on that list. Now this year, the youngest, wealthiest person on that list is the Duke of Westminster. He's 30 years old and worth 10 billion pounds. Yes, that's 10 billion pounds. And most of that money is kept in property. But here's the interesting thing. He did not build a property portfolio. It wasn't a little buy to let portfolio that he built to create that wealth. This is property wealth that he's inherited from his parents, from the grandparents, great grandparents. It's generational wealth. This is what really inspires me and motivates me about property. It will long outlive me even when I'm no longer here. My kids, my grandkids that don't exist right now will potentially benefit from the work that I'm doing right now. So when uh, I started getting into property about 15 years ago, the key thing that I was looking at is how can I create something that my family can benefit from and even beyond me, I can leave a legacy and they'll benefit from as well. So, you know, when you look at the Duke of Westminster, yes, you know, they've been fortunate to be able to inherit this wealth, but their parents and grandparents have done the right things at the right time to be able to benefit from some of that as well. Talking about young people, I have to give a shout out to a couple of fellow Brummies, which is Ben Francis and Lewis Morgan, the co-founders of Gymshark. Whilst they're still in their 20s, they are worth 847 million pounds. Not bad for a couple of young guys from Birmingham. One of the things that's really fascinated me, what does it take to get into the list of the 50 richest people? Now, if you have a look at this list here, this is the 50 richest people in the world. And obviously we've got the likes of Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and people like that right at the top of the list, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, people would expect. And as you go right down the list, you'll see you need to be hitting close to about 24 billion just to make it onto this global list. But if we look across into the UK, if we look at this list here, and currently, to be making it into the ranking of the 50s riches, you need to be worth about three and a half billion. But if you look back here to about 2011, so about 10 years ago, it was only a billion pounds. Well, I say only, it was a billion pounds to get into the top uh, riches. But if we look at one of these earlier editions, if I pull one of these old ones out, and if we look at this one, this is a 2002 edition, so going back a little bit further, if you look at this point now, we're going back about 20 years, to get into the list, you'd have to be around 500 million. But if you roll the clock back even further, so almost 30 years back now, it was 200 million. So what's this tell us? So we can see over time, people have just got richer and richer as time has gone on. Where you needed to have been worth about 200 million to make it into the top 50 about 30 years ago, now you need to be 300, sorry, three and a half billion to be getting into that list. A really interesting story that I want to finish with right now is that of two brothers from Blackburn. These guys, Mossim and Zubair Isa, between them have built up a chain of petrol stations. Well, I say a chain, it's actually a monster. 6,000 petrol stations around the world. The net worth of the two brothers has risen by more than a billion pounds over the last year. They've done a deal to buy a little corner shop you might have heard of, well, a chain of corner shops, Asda, which originally was purchased by Walmart, so went into American hands and now been bought back into the UK in terms of uh, ownership. But the really interesting part of their story is that they've agreed to buy Asda for 6.8 billion, which is quite a lot of money by anybody's means, but actually they're only putting in just over 10% of the amount of money required to purchase it. The rest of it is being borrowed. So really, it just goes to show there's a huge amount of money that's out there in the marketplace that's willing to lend for the right type of deals. But a nice little twist to this story is that these guys have given away more than 20 million pounds in charity in 2019. So it's not just all about making money, it's how you can help some other people along the way as well. I'd love to know your thoughts on the rich list. Do you think it's really fair for people to be making obscene amounts of money like the way they are in the rich list right now? Or do you think it should be a fairer distribution of wealth? On the other hand, you might think, hey, look, we live in a world right now that if you deliver enough value, you can make as much money as you possibly want. I'd love to know your thoughts. Make sure you pop it in the comment section below. But what I've got lined up for you next over here is a video that I did last year on last year's list. So this is this time last year, I did the list of the 2020 rich list. So make sure you watch that next over here. But just before you do that, make sure you click on my face down here, 
to subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you on this next video over here.